folks, of course, you know, we talk about this all the time. HBCUs play a major role in producing black college graduates. And the key, of course, to what they do is making sure that potential students graduate from high school. HBCUs should be especially attractive to black high schools with an interest in science and technology. They account for 18 percent of all engineering degrees earned by African Americans, 31 percent of all math degrees earned by blacks, and 21 percent of all business and management degrees earned by black college students. So joining me to talk about HBCUs and the strategies they use to get black students from high school graduation to college, Johnny Taylor, Johnny Taylor, President and CEO of the Thurgood Marshall Fund. So Johnny, what's happening? Good morning, man. How are you? All good. So when we talk about, um, again, in folks matriculating from high school uh, to college, bottom line is they kind of got to graduate first before they can come to the college campus. We keep saying to and through college is what it's all about. And so much of the focus uh, heretofore has been on getting students to enroll in college. And the question is, are we graduating them? Nationally, uh, graduation rates, six-year graduation rates from college at about 60 percent. HBCUs are at 35 percent. So we have some work to do. But the, but the thing, but we need to unpack that because part of the problem with this conversation is that what people don't understand is that you have to look at the student that's right. Coming in. So you got a lot of white students who are going to universities. They might have resources from parents. They might have access to dollars. A lot of those black students uh, are going there. They're going, they're stepping out of school. They're going back, earn some money, come back. So it's a different sort of situation there. But at the end of the day, it's it, the argument you make actually means we have even more responsibility right. to make sure that those students, uh, that we get them to and through college. If you are coming from a family where you don't have a backdrop and you've had to borrow thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to attend college, then you sure as hell need to graduate. So it's incumbent upon us not to focus on what's wrong with the student coming in, it's to figure out what we need to do while the student is there to get them through school. And HBCUs are committed to doing that, by the way. Are there any, so, so are there, give me an example of some programs that universities currently have uh, where they are assisting to ensure folks graduate so you have a, a, a pool of students to work with. So first of all we're doing a lot of what we some people call intrusive academic counseling in fact we're now calling it invasive <laughs> academic counseling literally we're sitting down with first generation students and saying this is what your first semester set of courses will look like the assumption that you can take an 18 year old who's typically first generation from a socio a, a challenge socioeconomic status uh, and and tell them just come in and do your best at graduating you need 120 20 credits four years later is naive of us and irresponsible. So what we're doing is sitting down and helping them actually select their first year courses. Don't take calculus, chemistry, physics at one time. That doesn't make sense. You've got to get through all of those courses as a pre-med major, but you do it, you scale this in a way such that you can maintain your grade. So that's one of the things that we're doing and we're being smart about it. That's number one. Secondly, when the student doesn't show up, show up to class, for example, you know, you used to hear about in the HBC world, the professor would know you're not there, they'll come down and pull you out of your dorm room. Well, we now have a 2020 sort of approach to that now. It's called sending text messages. We're actually reaching out to the students when we notice you're not there, when we understand that your quiz grades are dropping, when we see trends to suggest that you will not be successful, we're then reaching out and invading, literally, getting into that student's business to make sure that they come to class and ultimately graduate. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, Yolanda Young, Howard University, class of, uh, of 1990. Can you start with the shout outs and get to the <laughs> so, Can you get well, to the question on the shout outs? <laughs> well, this is what I'd like to know. Um, what are you doing for those students financially? I was a Pell Grant recipient. Uh, father was a high school dropout. Uh, mother uh, had only con attended community college. Uh, financially, it, it was a struggle. That's right. So, so, so what are you doing to assist students? You, you just nailed it. The reality is we've got to do two things. First of all, students coming in, we've got to help them make better decisions. The reality is if you come from a home where you have no other assistance in coming to that school, then you've got to make d different decisions. It could be that you have to s attend the local state school, state HBCU, versus a private HBCU, right. because yeah. you simply can't afford it. Right. And we have students who enroll in the school, they get there the first semester, Howard University, I made you $40,000 a year, and they can't return the second but, but also year. That's part of the issue with Morehouse, where guys go there for two years, that's right. And they and don't collect for the junior out. year. So we've got to have real conversations about whether or not one can afford to attend the school. That's the second thing. And then, then it's all about financial literacy. We have now, at the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, begun talking with our students a lot with Wells Fargo about how do you afford school. So academic advising is one issue. Financial counseling is another big part of it. All right, Johnny, we appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Uh, David, Yolanda. 
Gino, it was a pleasure. Appreciate it. Folks, find out why this little girl is feeling in the spirit. Now, what the hell is happening next? News one now on TV One. This guy want me. See my.